Good evening guys and welcome to some additional Dota 2 action. We've seen the Gosu Cup, we've seen RNG Sports dominate some Belarusians, we've seen and heard the hilarious Zyklop block, Zyklops co-cast with me, the Harlem Shake and Sand King, everything from the sun, he's got a comparison, comparison with it for Dota 2. But now we're back on my own, not only are we missing Zyklops, we're missing LD, we're also missing Clockwork. Clockwork has run away from home, he's no longer in our intro video apparently. Um, I think LD is just secretly looking to boycott Clockwork because he, he wants to feature his favourite hero, the Gyrocopter on our intro video. I've told him you can't use Gyrocopter going up a mountain because, well, it's just not as cool as Clockwork hooking his way up there. Um, although alternatively, we actually are looking to have some awesome little intros with maybe a tiny tossing someone up. We've got all kinds of cool stuff planned, including our very own broadcast studio here in LA. It's happening. It's happening soon-ish. Hopefully not seconds. as hopefully not soon valve time. Hopefully soon beyond the summit time, which is slightly faster than Five valve time, although probably not remaining. much. Do expect some delays there, but mid March is the goal. That's what we're aiming for. And luckily for you guys, until then, we still can cover some events. We've got my laptop here in LA, and that's all we need to cast stuff. Although we may not have uh, as many screams as I was like. I can't actually check out the chat while casting because I've only got my laptop. I haven't got any additional monitors. But hey, it doesn't stop me casting. It doesn't stop me doing what I love most, which is covering Dota 2. Uh, for those of you guys who still want to follow the Ghostly Cup, head on over to Shiva stream or Zyklops is casting on the ELG 2 stream. But right now, right here, we have got the We Play European Dota 2 qualifier for their We Play Dota 2 League, which is a $10,000 plus $10,000 in uh, prizes, oh, sorry, $20,000 in prizes, $10,000 in cash, $10,000 in gear being given out to the best teams in Europe and America. We're going to have 24 directly invited teams, eight teams come through and qualifiers. Four of those teams are already chosen. Um, Fnatic NA uh, were one of the American teams qualifying, another team from America I haven't heard of, and then the European qualifier, we had Rat in the Dark. Um, as well as someone else whose name is slipping my mind, qualify for the European one. So here we are in the second and final European qualifier. We've also got an American qualifier on later today. And, well, we're going to see who's going to come out on top, whether it's TCM, a team which some of you guys may recognize. They played in the defense. They played in some other recent European and American tournaments. They're up against the likes of Oryx Gaming, a team who I've not heard of. I don't know anything about Oryx. Int. Apparently they're an international team. However, I do know a thing or two about a couple of these players. Dubas, a name some of you might recognize from teams. He's played with Artstyle before. He's played, I think, in DTS even. He's a known Ukrainian player. Uh, and then we've got some other names who I'm not too familiar with, although I think Tony Montana's name for some reason rings a bell. I think he's an alias of someone I know, but either way, it's a team who are apparently fairly well known and who should be able to put up a fight up, up against TCM. A team who've caused some upsets Five over their, seconds, the course of their uh, history in the the defense. In I believe they're in Starlight. I'm not sure if they're actually in the. I don't think they're in the Star Series. I think they're in the Pro Series there. But they're still a team who are definitely capable of fighting it out with the big guns. And we're going to see whether or not Aurochs are one of going to be one of those big guns. They're an upcoming European teams. As are all the teams playing in this qualifier. This is a really a chance for teams to sort of get basically find that breakthrough time. They they want to get themselves known. They want to make it into the big scene. They want to get invited to the upcoming big tournaments. Well, these open qualifiers are the way to do it because if you get through the qualifier, you're in the running for that ten thousand dollars in cash, ten thousand dollars in gear. And uh, it's a really a great opportunity for all the upcoming teams in Europe and America. So great to see these kind of tournaments existing. And great to see these two teams giving it a shot. TCM especially, they've been giving it a shot for some time. Haven't had that big breakthrough, but they've definitely been fairly consistent. And every now and then they'll Ten they'll, they'll have that remaining. wow factor. They'll, they'll manage to take down a team that you wouldn't expect them to beat. Five and, uh, we'll have to see remaining. whether or not they can do it here. Whether or not they can beat Aurox, a team. Well, if you're if you're TCM, you're probably looking pretty. You're probably feeling at least somewhat confident. You at least feel this is a game you should be winning in. Looking at the brackets for this qualifier, there's two names which sort of are the known teams. You've got NextKZ and you've got TCM. Those are the two sort of somewhat sponsored. I say sponsored, but NextKZ, uh, as far as I know, they're looking for a sponsor still. Uh, even though NextKZ is like their, their local computer cafe, but I don't think they're actually sponsored. They don't get sent to events. And TCM, they are a sponsored team, and they are a fairly well-known team. So we'll see how they do here. Draft. They've gone for a Darkseer, Lifesteal, a Gyrocopter, Venomance, and no time for draft discussion, no time for even predicting picks and bans because it's all laid out in front of us. We've got one pick left to predict. What are we looking at here? They need another support. Uh, they're up against an Enchantress. They probably want to go for... Ooh... Looking at this, something with a, an extra disable, which is something like a Sand King. Um, Sand King, obviously not the ideal support. Rubik's been banned out. Bane's been banned out. So 
the one pick which I get to predict. I'm, I'm currently looking at Sand King. Although I'm trying to think what else they can look to, look to combine Five there. Otherwise they look for something like a Lashrak. Maybe a Lena, but I'd say they're more likely to go for the tankier option, the Sand King, that gives them some team fight as well. Um, they really want to get greedy, they could go for an Enigma jungle here, but mostly they need some other se secondary support, the, the four position support, something which can do with a bit of farm, which is something like a Sand King. So it'd be nice to see them pick that up, or if they really want to get greedy, they can go with the Enigma. And they pretty much, it looks like they're going to be up against an offlane lone druid, unless it's offensive trialing, which it could be. You've got the offensive jungler Enchantress, who's much better at getting aggressive than a Chen. Juggernaut, Nixasan, oh, sorry, Juggernaut and Shadow Demon, a strong duo of heroes there as, there as well. And this is very sort of LGD Int esque. LGD Int love to go for an offensive trial lane. They love Shadow Demon and Enchantress. Lone Druid as a safe lane farmer. Nix can go mid. This is something they. This is like an. I feel like this is an exact draft that LGD International has run. There's your less track. I listed that hero. I'm going to claim some points, partial points at least. It wasn't the Sand King, but it's the Lestrac. And this is almost identical, I, just to finish that point, to an LGD in draft. I feel like this is maybe an exact draft they've done, where they'd run G on the Nyx Assassin mid, Lone Druid as a safe lane solo, and then offensive trial lane. You've got Misery playing the Enchantress to get the Shadow Demon for 1437, and then Brax, who would play that sort of trial lane, tri -lane farmer, Although they're not always looking to get him farmed up, it's always sort of like a something like a clockwork sometimes or a juggernaut here, something which is more like sort of this mid game, sort of hard to kill hero. They go for life sealer every now and then, but we'll see how this pans out for them um, with the the juggernaut as not potential offensive trial. They may just look for a safe lane trial and run the lone druid as an off lane hero. He's got the bears; he can use that to to pull waves Ten out. Seconds as remaining. we do hop into this game. We're no longer sponsored by you guys. Five seconds All right, remaining. that was from the GoTo Cup, sponsored by Gigabyte and MSI, but this is your We Play Dota 2 Cup. We're sponsored by Logitech here. I actually have some cool Logitech in-game ads to play, but I don't think they're actually set up to be played yet on our stream. Um, but it looks like TCM just needs a second to, to adjust, get things ready, and uh, get things underway here at your We Play Dota 2 League. And uh, next KZ is still in the tournament, as I see someone asking that. And uh, we're going to see how these two teams want to land things. It's going to be Dubas playing the Enchantress. We've got Orox Cena, the captain, playing the, the Juggernaut, actually. CA playing the Lone Druid. Tony Montana playing the Next Assassin. And Hala playing the Shadow Demon. Over on the Dire side, the TCM. What, is, what does TCM stand for? Someone let me know. I feel like from memory is a kind of cool, it looks like TCM Gaming. I'm wondering if it actually has a, an, an abbreviation that it stands for anything. We've got Quix playing the Lifestealer, Wernay playing the Darkseid, Go Audio playing Venomancer, Blueberry Ninja on the Shrek, and then we've got CHW, or Chewy, I believe it is, playing the Gyrocopter, who looks to be their solo mid. You've got your trialing with the Venom, Leshrac, and Lifesteal, and then finally your offlane hero, or at least your sideline solo in the Darkseid. Uh, you say off lane here, but he can go that safe lane if they want to go the offensive trialing with the Veno, Lestrac, and Lifestealer. Lifestealer is great for that, but the two supports, Veno and Lestrac, are very exposed. If you go offensive trialing with them against an Enchantress, Shadow Demon, and Juggernaut, you're in for a lot of trouble. Even though they can't go on the, they can't really go on the Lifestealer. He he works fine. It's these two supports. You just, they just can't keep themselves alive. You haven't got a reliable stun. Um, and there's just a potential for Enchantress to just come in and clean up. So I think they go for a safe trial lane. And if, an, if we see an offensive trial lane, it's going to come from this Radiant side. Whether or not they want to take their risk, or whether or not they just look to get Jug some early game farm, have Lone Druid play in the off lane, just survive for the early game, and then give him some safer farm later on. Because he's going to be their main carry. It's just a matter of not whether they sort of put him to suffer for the first five minutes in the off lane, and then look to sort of make up for it at a later time once they've got this juggernaut with some, some early levels, early farms. He goes for sort of a phase boots drum type build where he can just get these utility items as uh, slightly extended pause. Funny, uh, funnily enough, I had Zyclops ask, "Why is there a pause before every game?" And here we are, paused as usual before the game begins. But uh, that is. <laughs> That is the state of the Dota 2 scene, it looks like. I mean, it's one of those things where you don't want to leave while the draft is going on. I mean, even if you're not the one drafting, you want to either, A, take part in the draft. I mean, you're part of the team. You can suggest you can suggest picks or at least take part in it. I mean, some some teams just have their captain do it and not don't let other players advise. And secondly, it's just you want to sort of 
I guess, get in the mentality and get ready to play. See what hero you're going to be playing as soon as possible. You don't want to come back to the computer towards the end of the draft and be like, oh, what am I playing? What lane am I going? What items do I need to get? You want to sort of be mentally preparing to play that hero while the draft is going on. Even when you already see your pick, if you, your hero gets first picked up, you still sort of, I guess, you want to see, you also need to see your opponent's draft. As it's happening, you want to say, okay, they've just picked up that. That's likely to be laning against that. And they say, well, I'm either against this or that. So it's all about this mental preparation. Once the game starts, that's when you're like, okay, I've done my mental preparation. Well, crap, now i still got to go to the toilet. Or crap, now i got to still um, finish finish Skyping my mum. It's all these things which uh, just sort of happen after the draft is over, after you've been mentally preparing during the draft. As uh, It looks like TCM are ready to go. And uh, the rating team say they're ready. And they did say unpause when ready, so they did say they did say G, even though they didn't have a give them a whole lot of a whole lot of warning, but they did say the dire team just to go whenever ready, and they are in fact ready. We'll see these lanes are all out. It's going to be the trailing top, as you probably expect. I mean, this is what I expected, and I'd be surprised if they didn't do this. And this is the one thing which I was kind of 50-50 about. Do Orox go for an offensive try lane? I felt like they would. I think it's a stronger laning setup because of how well Lone Druid does in the 1v1 matches in the, in the safe lane. Even if there's top trial lane, they don't win. As long as they can sort of give Lifestealer a bit of a tough time, don't give up too many kills, that's all they're after. They're not after Juggernaut to get a ton of farm. They're not after the Enchantress to get a ton of kill. They're just looking to sort of trade blows somewhat, somewhat all right. Somewhat favorably, great. Somewhat unfavorably, still okay, as long as they don't give up too many kills, because they're going to have a Lone Druid farming at bottom lane. They've got a Nyx Assassin who can come help out with the ganks later on, and overall, it's a, it's a decent lane for them. Although, this is not the start they're after. It's a dead bear. Well, I mentioned Lone Druid's one of the best safe lane solos. We're going to see how he does without a bear. I think they're expecting Lone Druid to maybe be top. When they see that bear there as well, especially, they're like, okay, Lone Druid likely be in the top lane. They see the bear. Actually, no. Yeah, they, they're going to put Darkstream Battle in the jungle. Begins. They're saying, okay, they're going to go tri lane with, what, Shadow Demon, Jug, and Enchantress. Let's send Darkstream in the jungle. But it's actually Lone Druid bottom. This is this is a stroke of luck for Aurox, because if Darkstream had started bottom, laning against a, a Lone Druid who doesn't have his Spirit Bear, Lone Druid struggles to, to actually farm as well as he could. And it's going to be a tri lane top. This is something which, well, Lone Druid is... is Got no stroke of lucky by not having to be up against a Darkster in lane. And so we'll see Trilon versus Trilon on top. That's where the action's likely to happen. And they're not expecting this. They're expecting Lone Druid to be here, especially when his bear's there. They're like, oh great, we don't even have to worry about him pulling our creep wave. But it's going to be, well, Lone Druid up bottom. And immediately Darkster he heads towards bottom. He's like, oh god, I've got to get there. Looks like he finished off, yeah, just the one small camp. And now he's heading bottom, realizing what he's giving up to this Lone Druid. By the time Darkster's there, He's going to have his bear. And uh, he's he's not missed a, a, a last... Oh, I was about to say. I was about to say he hasn't missed a last hit. An enemy last hit yet. But he, he just misses one there. Can't put him under too much pressure. I'll stop watching and then he'll stop missing last hits. As, uh, we'll put that chart up so, so you guys can see. Tornado creep being picked up. And that's, well... The penguin who can't fly, apparently. As uh, Zyclops and I discovered. He's got these big giant wings which are just for making tornadoes. He is a bird, but he can't fly. It is a sad life of a wildkin. Or I, I say, I shouldn't say Wildkin. Wild Wing Ripper. I've never actually seen that name until now. That is an absolutely terrible name. Surely you can come up with something better than a Wild Wing, Rick, Wild Wing Ripper valve. I don't, I don't think they had their thinking caps on when they came up with that one, but... I'll cut him some slack. We've got Chewy at the mid lane. He's already got his bottle up. Got himself six creep kills, and this is what I'm talking about. This top lane, they're not going to be able to completely shut down Lifesteal's farm. Even with the offensive trial, and it's all about just trading favorably. Um, and even if Lifesteal is slightly out farms the Juggernaut, they're still okay with it as long as they're not giving up kills, as long as they're pressuring these supports, keeping them on edge. Because Lone Druid should be getting decent farm at bottom lane. Although he is going to have that long cooldown on his bear, so he can't let this bear get too low, take too much harass. Mid lane, we've got the uh, Nyx Assassin off getting a rune for the time being. He's going to find himself a haste rune, making sure Gyrocopter doesn't get it for one thing. As a Gyrocopter, Marka Barrage, Mana Burn as well being dropped off. Creep Web actually going to tank part of that. Tony Montana does have this haste rune, not going to pop it for the time being. Bottles up and, uh, well, he's going to have... Oh, yeah, let's say, I thought he was going to save it for the rock Barrage. Immediately flat cannons, knowing that uh, another mana burn can come in basically at any time. Top lane. Shadow Demon and Enchantress just looking to disrupt this bull. You need to be careful with that uh, Dark Troll Summoner. Level 6 creep does give away a lot of XP if you're not careful. 
He's now got himself a Centaur with the Dark Troll, so this is a this is a potent duo. You get the Ensnare, and you follow it up with the Centaur Stun, although theoretically just the Centaur Stun alone, you can get off with a Shadow Demon Disruption, and you can see Leshtrak and Venomats aren't coming anywhere near this. They don't want to... they don't want to deal with that. Mid lane, Nyx. Wow. Looks like he used his Haste Rune as well as all those bottle charges. And the Gyrocopter's still plenty of health there. He's got it's Tango's as well as Salves. Oh, top lane, they've gone in on Quicks. He actually rages after the Ensnare. I thought the Ensnare would have been used to sort of help keep keep up. Well, basically, when you rage, you can Ensnare through it. It's a great tool to have, but it looks like they let off with a rage there. Nowhere near enough damage to help deal with this lifestyle, although they do force out a ton of regen. So, even though you look at this farm and say the offensive challenge isn't working, Lifesteal is still out farming Jug. He's used up all his regen. He's only got himself boots. He really doesn't have any way else of sustaining himself in lane apart from Feast. And he's even gone for a second point in Feast to, to give him that extra lifesteal. Normally you see the Rage being maxed out. The, the, it's like a 4-1-1-1 one, one, one build. You get one in everything, including your ultimate, and then you get four in Rage as the first thing you max. But we're not seeing it here. And again, coming towards the mid lane on, on Chewie. He, he's staying on the bottom side. His positioning here is, is flawless. He knows a gank could come in, and if it does, it's from the top lane. So he stays near the bottom further down here. And then it also, basically, he, he doesn't go for the top rank, because if it spawns top, he, he's sort of running into the Enchantress gank, perhaps, as well as a Nyx Assassin. So he says, okay, let's hope Rune spawns bottom. If it spawns top, I'm not getting it anyway. So if it's going to spawn bottom, you may as well head there early and make sure that you beat the Nyx Assassin there. So smart play from Chewie at the mid lane. Some good 1v1 laning there as uh, the supports all head back top. We've got Venom and Lestrek. They rotate back, as does Dubas with his Enchantress. Paul's coming out. It's actually stolen the mana burn creep here, something which is very pesky. Problem is he's already taken a lot of damage on it, so he won't be able to send it back in without feeding a bit of gold. Maybe he gets off one more mana burn if he places and times it well, but this is not going to be the easiest initiation coming out from him, as it looks like. Mouse died. That's why you don't use wireless mouses. Or if he's got a wired mouse, I don't know. I don't know what he's doing. Hopefully he's got a backup mouse if it's a wired mouse and it actually died. Bottom lane, Lone Druid. He's... Uh, on top of the farm, going for the Orb of Venom. Pretty standard stuff there. And this is causes, this is problematic for the Dark Zip, because Sol Ring obviously chews away a lot of your HP every time you use it, and this Poison Orb is going to allow a lot of extra damage to come from the Lone Druid, who's going to have the Entangle now as well. He's level 5, so... Lone Druid actually forced to send his bear back to base to heal. Something, top tower well, is which isn't attack. ideal, for obvious reasons. Uh, he wants to keep it there in base. He could actually resummon it, but... Not going to see that coming out, and uh, Salve's actually being shared, because Quix, he used up all his regen, so... That gets shared out. Gale actually going to land on the Juggernaut. That was just a purely defensive Gale. He can't actually spin after that, because he does still remain slowed, so as long as you hit the Gale before the spin comes out. You can't Gale him while he's spinning, but if you get the Gale up before, he does remain slowed. And now they just want to make sure they can play this as safe as possible on the top lane. They're really, they're really worried, but... They actually come out on top there, because Leshtrak managed to get a last hit on the Enchantress Furbolg, so... All said and done, this top lane for TCM. They're uh, playing it. They're playing it well enough. Slightest of gold lead going the way of Aurox, but really nothing separating these two teams for the time being. And we'll have to see what's going to be that difference maker. It's it's going to be it's going to come from the games. Where if Nyx, we saw this happen with with some of the Gozu Cup games, the Nyx Assassin for our KS on uh, the ISG team. He once he started roaming, he did not successfully. He did not efficiently use his time and get any successful ganks, and that really, basically was what screwed over ISD to a large extent. And if he, if this Nyx Assassin gets successful ganks, it starts swinging some momentum into Aurox's favor. If he starts moving on the map and not getting ganks, then it can be very, very bad. Very catastrophic for them. They waste a lot of time. The two supports. Ooh, Chewie, he's heading towards bottom lane. I think he's actually... Sp I want to say he walked into range of the uh, the Shadow Demon there. Gyro Gyrocopter's actually going to go running and look at the Dubas. He's actually caught in an enemy territory here. Two support heroes. There should be enough damage to bring him down. The tornado is there. He's going to drop an ultimate. I don't think it's going to hit anyone. The second wave may hit Dubas. Does do so, but the problem is there's too much damage right off the bat. Chewie does not have another fl another rocket barrage. And first blood to the t supports. The rotation was coming from Nyx Assassin. I think he actually got in X P range for it, and uh, that's going to help him out as well as uh, he goes back towards mid lane, gets himself his level seven. So there's your max out and pale. His damage now, if he wants to look for a gank, is going to be pretty powerful. Dubas, back towards the uh, the neutrals there. As uh, those of you guys wondering, this is Gods casting the We Play Dota 2 League. Uh, I'm on my own because LD is on his way to here to LA. I'm already here in LA, but LD's driving across the country. It's going to take him a good four days to get here from Philadelphia. 
But until then, I'll be doing some casting. Do some with co-casters like we just saw for the Ghosty Cap with Zyclops, but for this wee play Dota 2 Qualifier, we'll be solo casting. <laughs> <laughs> that is not ideal. Um, you're, you're in trouble, Leshrek. Looks like his mouse. Um, what looks like a wireless mouse. Revised. Having battery issues would be I my guess. I'm, I'm not sure why you would play gaming on a wireless mouse, but it seems to be the case, perhaps, for this uh, Leshrek. As uh, Seema, with his early phase boots, gets a solo kill up there. And that's where his supports abandoning him. He gets a kill when his supports aren't even there, which is a big, big pickup. Oh, they're going to go in there looking for Darkseid. Is there any follow-up to a disruption? There's your disruption. They've got an ensnare. They need an entangle as well. Ensnare. Entangle. Is there going to be one? Are they going to get it? No. Not going to come. And Wernick does go. He's gone for the second point of surge. I like this decision. We didn't see that Radiance earlier on today. Where Darkseid went for the four in vacuum, four in iron shell with just the one point in surge. And not having that second point in surge can get you killed a lot of the times. Go for the third point. It's less sort of cost effective. But that second point can be very, very effect cost efficient and can help get you out of a pickle, like the one we saw there. Although even with the one point there, he still would have been okay. We didn't get the entangle, but the second point, the extra duration as well as the shorter cooldown can make a big, big difference. Looks like Vendetta was forced out from the, the Nyx Assassin. He is going to find himself a rune here, so... He's going to be a bit, bit of solace there for him, as he does invis towards the mid lane here. Gyrocopter playing very, very safe, very defensive. He knows that a rune's been picked up, and worst case scenario, well... You get an Invis rune, yeah, or a Haste rune, I should say. Haste rune, you can go looking to dive under towers. Invis rune, it's the perfect setup you could hope for. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Top lane, Quicks has got his phase boots. We're not seeing the phase drums here. Straight phase into armlet. The phase boots are great, great item to have in the trial versus trial for the extra damage as well as the movement speed. And Nyx really does benefit a lot from the the movement speed as well as that ability to just to just shift through, through creeps. Oh, cheeky cheeky. Carapace just to block that. He, he was like, okay, I'm going to walk outside. And he's like, wait, no, I can just tank it. Well, not tank it. I can just make the gyrocopter take the damage instead of me. Nice little, cute little decision there. As we actually see max out flat cannons from Chewie. Not going for any points in homing missile. He's not looking to gank too much. Or he's looking to just use the rocket barrage as his main damage in a ganking scenario. He's got himself some phase boots now. This is this is just problem. This is just hard to land against. In the one v one matchup, having these extra points in flat cannon, the constant harass is just so damn annoying. Oh Venno, oh Venno, you've gone too far. You've overstayed your welcome. Yeah. Nick's assassin with the solo kill. Mana burn comes out afterwards as the supports were coming in, but they weren't even needed for that. He almost actually hit a two hero impale, which could have been very very problematic for this dire side for the gyrocopter especially. Who's uh, got nothing left in this bottle? He's going to have to go back and heal up in a second, I imagine. He's stacking these camps. He has got flat cannon here, so we'll have to see whether he looks to heal up first. I don't think he wants. Well, I don't think he can try and kill this yet. He's going to hope for a rune, and uh, he doesn't get it. It's bottom, so another rune going to go the way of this Nyx assassin, I imagine. Nice gyrocopter. He may be able to sneak around. Ooh, he's trying his best to. Did the shadow shadow poison going to spot him out? Yeah, it did spot him out. Nyx assassin is now chasing, but Chewie's actually got this rune. He snuck on by. Got got himself a rune. Immediately pops it as well. Give himself some mana and heal himself to full. There's a lone druid. He's got his phase boots on this bear as well as that poison orb. Controlling this bottom lane pretty well. He's actually just on par with the lifesteal as far as farm goes. Oh, Gyrocopter ultimate from Fog. Gonna land perfectly. Immediately lone druid ultimates. We'll have to see whether that's enough HP to help get him out of this one. Needs some entangles here. Is Chewie gonna get entangled up? We're gonna have to see another rocket barrage. Not gonna be needed. Darkseid with the iron shell. Gets close enough to finish off the kill and... Uh, Gyrocopter low, but uh, he gets out of there. The clever positioning with that ultimate caught Lone Druid by surprise. And oh, TCM. Blueberry Ninja. <laughs> Zap down. Gale doesn't even matter. You slow him, it doesn't even matter. Vendetta with the impale damage and a mana burn just KOs Leshrac from full HP. Full HP Leshrac, but he's level 4 with just two branches. He does not have anything to survive it. And this is the kind of utility build you see from these offensive trailing jugs. Just straight phase drums. Then he goes for something with uh, maybe some survivability, but at no point does he look to go for really pure DPS. Just They just don't see the pure DPS as something that, that, that essential. Ooh, I thought that tower was getting denied. Not going to be the case here. Enchantress, I may have overstayed. Shadow Demon, defensive disruption, and while disrupted, 
buys himself some time uh, to get some more heals off, and Juggernaut going to go in with an Omni Slash. It does chase the Darks here perfectly. Very lucky Darks, uh, very, very lucky Juggernaut ultimate. The Stout Shield keeping himself alive a bit longer. I mean, allowed him to tank, I believe, a Venomancer here. The problem is now TCM just overwhelming Orox. Nyx Assassin goes Invis here, and not going to be enough. One more second, sorry, going to go Invis just now. One more second to it, not going to happen. Let's show with the stun. Finishes him off. I thought that was... I thought he was going to escape out of that one, but Leshrac, no, denies that Invis from him. Enchantress now, going to find a DD room, more than anything, just steal it from this Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter would have loved to have gotten that. Looks like he's going to be the one going for the drums. And uh, it's TCM going for a top tier one tower. They're now behind just by the one kill. They got some, some key kills there. Juggernaut as well as Nyx Assassin both going down. The entire time though, it's Lone Druid farming. Also gets a T1 tower bottom. Oh dear. Problematic, problematic. Not the end of the world, but that's two towers they just gave away to the Radiant team. One that they could have had a deny on the top lane for sure, and bottom lane it looks like they at least were in contention for. But it really looked like they should have had that top lane deny. They were in the better position to get it. Just slightly mistimed as uh See how where Gyrocopter goes with this. He has gone for the complete max barrage, not even worrying about a single point in homing missile. He could get the occasional good initiation from it. The stun duration, I mean, even at level one, is 2.2 seconds. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. It's still really fantastic if you can get it off. Obviously, it's not a rely, excuse me, reliable stuns by any means, but fortified. and it's also something that Nyx Assassin can uh, damage block. Although he still gets stunned, so still still worth using on him if you can get that 2.2 second stun off. Dubas with a point booster up now. Have to see how the Aurox team looked to, look to play around this. Whether, look, whether or not they look to keep on pushing there, but a very fairly tanky Enchantress. More tanky than you'd normally have with this point booster. And they're going to lose this Nyx Assassin. Sentry Wards are there. Nyx Assassin, there's nowhere to hide in. It's going to be Shadow Demon. Has he got a way out? Is there a vacuum? Not going to come, and with that, Shadow Demon does manage to TP out of there, but they've lost the key here of the Nyx Assassin and possibly even this T1 mid tower. TCM going for some great 5 man Dota here. This group up is starting to work out well for them. And that's, I think, not even really five men. They haven't had Lifestealer join up with them. And when Lifestealer does, he's going to have an armor. This is, I believe, his armor. Yep. 14 minutes, he's got the armlet phase. So, right now, the two teams really trading blow for blow. You've got Lone Druid at bottom lane. He's picked up a Glove of Hay, so we're looking at a Maelstrom build, perhaps. I thought we'd be seeing a Radiance, considering how well he's been farming. It's been a more or less free lane for him, but it's, it's pointing towards a, a Maelstrom build. Unless he just wants that bit extra bit of um, extra bit of attack speed and then goes for the radiance, but this does look more like a, a radiance game with with the free farm lane he's had. But he decides against it, and TCM now not going to have to worry about that late game farming lone druid. They're going to have to worry about this more mid game presence that you get from the maelstrom. As uh, something they do have up their sleeves now is Chewy. It looks like he has got his drum of endurance. Life still with an armlet. Let's see what these two supports are back in. Blueberry Ninja just with wards and boots. Darks here. No mech as of yet. When they get this mech, that's when they can really look to group up and push. And uh, they're going to have to try to stop this push coming out from Oryx here. The T1 tower, there's not really much stopping it from going down here. Juggernaut with the spin just to help make sure that he doesn't get sort of counter your shadow. As well as try to ensure that T1 tower doesn't get denied. Because while spinning, you can still attack the tower. Although it actually was, in the end, Enchantress who got the tower. I think, yeah, Enchantress got the tower. And now... They're going to continue on. They're really feeling strong. Morox, they've got the phase drums up. Two points in the healing horn. And uh, with this Nyx Assassin Arcane Boots, they've got this uh, mana just to continually spam out. Lone Druid, signed to come to the fray. And when you're going this Maelstrom build, you're not looking to keep on farming for that Radiance. You can really get more active and pushing early on. Although, looks like Jung actually TP top. Oh, is there an ultimate? That's going to cancel, what's well, going to cancel his TP. Now he's looking to try to chase down the Life Stealer. He needs to phase away. He's going to just manage to do so. He even pops the drums here. They're looking to really chase down Quicks. He's going to armlet toggle up a lot of HP. Can we get an impale off? Oh, he's just going to straight up impale. He doesn't even need the vendetta damage. Gets the kill. Life Stealer thought he was fine there. I think he thought he was in the free, but the problem was that the uh, Nyx Assassin had come in. Tony Montana secures his team a kill. He's now up to 19 gold. We'll have to see whether he goes for the, for the, uh, the standard pub Dagon, which is actually not a, not a bad build, or whether he goes for the mobility, the four star or the Blink Dagger, which we've seen other Nyx Assassins go for, as uh, he's now up to about 2k gold, so something will be coming out soon. If he wants a full staff, he's a couple hundred away. If he wants a Blink, he's even less away. If he wants a Dagon, well, he needs a bit more, but we should at least see a staff of Wizardry or something coming out.
quick dagger it is. All about the mobility. Try to get himself in position for a multi-hero stun. Ooh, Lone Druid. Uh, you may regret that TP. Immediate surge in Venomance awards, and he's... Well, I mean, obviously he can't TP out. He's just used it. He's just TP into his own death. There's no support coming. Well, there may be, but it's it's nowhere near. Not coming anytime soon. Enchantress is just going to go into the jungle here. and It looks like Oryx is just going to have to give up this T1 tower, and, as well as a Lone Druid who just TP in. So a, a reasonable size loss for them. As uh, TCM actually looks to continue this push on the bottom lane. We'll have to see what Oryx is going to do about this, whether or not they look to defend this. Three points in the Shadow Poison. If they can get, spam a bit of that off, it will slow down this push, but it looks like they're not going to go for it. They're actually going to maybe look for a mid lane gank here. Enchantress is there with an Ensnare. It leads off with an Impale. Ensnare to follow things up. There will be a Purge if need be. Purge is going to slow down the Raging Nex. He's going to try TP his way out of here, but is there enough damage? There isn't. No additional disables either. There was a disruption, but the problem was the Rage. It lasts six full seconds, and he timed the TP well enough that he wasn't going to go down. Smart play from Life Stealer. Well, not so much smart, but dealing with the pressure, pressure situation as well as you can. It was the right decision, that's for sure. And, uh, making sure that you don't panic. A lot of people panic under pressure and just, just go for a full out flee. They'll just look to rage and continue to run, but you're not running with that purge on you. The only way out of that situation was to TP it. He recognized it, went, away, went, went straight forward. Juggernaut wasn't there for an Omni Slash. It's the one thing which can cancel. Go through that rage. Actually, sorry, I take that back. They've also got an entangle coming out from a lone druid bear, who wasn't wasn't there, of course. Neither was the juggernaut, but it's TCM now. They're the ones who've had the better map control as of late. They've uh, kept these lanes well pushed out. They've been taking these out of towers pretty proficiently, and they've there we go. We see we see it reflected. They've sort of bounced back, and they're now up by 1k gold. So 3k gold swing over the last couple of minutes, going their way, but still very even this game. XP as well, slight edge to TCM as of late. The last few kills have been going their way, apart from that life. So the one thing which really hurt them was that life steal death, death at top. That was the one thing which was sort of a breath of fresh air for Oryx, keeping keeping them pretty much pretty much even with this TCM squad. Nix, careful. He's gonna f he's gonna find his Venom. I think he sees food. He sees food. Oh, less track even. 800, Impale, Mana Burn, is there enough damage here? He pops a Carapace and uh, there is a magic one there. Carapace going to go off. Oh, Mech is going to come in just in time. Nyx Assassin gets caught out. I think he should have gone for Venomancer. Venomancer has less HP than Lesh. 910, 739. Venomancer was dead. He went for the wrong hero. He saw Leshrac, but he, I don't think he clicked Leshrac. If he clicked Leshrac, he would have seen two braces. Leshrac had two braces there and was just so damn tanky. There wasn't any bringing down this Lashrak. Venomancer was the possible kill, and he didn't go for that one. He went for the other. Now Venomancer picks up a gem and says, Okay, let's get some map control, but more importantly, let's counter this Nyx Assassin initiation. Juggernaut has picked up a Perseverance. Maybe, I, I said Juggernaut not likely to go for a pure DPS build, but Battle Fury is pretty heavy in the DPS factory. As, uh, there we go, Roshan does fall. TCM, they put it on the Life Stealer, who's now got himself Armlet, his first Mithril Hammer, so looking probably at a Desolator here. Is that the expected build to come out with this Desolate, although we could see Maelstrom into the Mjolnir, you get some decent attack speed, as well as the uh, the Chain Lightning attack, which can do some strong extra additional damage. Speaking of Maelstroms, there we go, Lone Druid's got his. We need to deal with these Ancients, although he's, he's quickly realised that maybe not the best decision, especially with the Dire team having just taken Roshan, and then, now they're all missing from the map. Although he doesn't realise Life still is here, dealing with his own Ancients, but for the, for the most part, Playing it safe, worried about a smoke gank. Even with his observer on the high ground, he knows that these heroes can come in with a smoke, catch him by surprise, and the uh, the initiation potential is it's pretty scary. Maybe he, actually, he may have actually spotted Gyrocop to pick up this Invis rune, which definitely would have scared him off going for these ancients if he knew Gyrocop had an Invis rune. Quicks heading. Oh, it's his team. His team have actually smoked up, so we may see Quicks looking to bait things out here. Go audio going back towards the middle lane. We'll have to see. Uh, oh, looks like we may be a bit of an engagement room. Dubas going out very, very far. Immediately pops a heal. The Gale is there. Vacuum back in with two or three heroes here. They can spot the Nyx Assassin because of this gem here. Venomancer is the focus. Immediately drops the gem. Wastes in. It looks like it was actually destroyed rather than picked up. But one for one trade so far. Juggernaut is in the fray. He's going to look to TP out. Doesn't want to stay in there for too much longer. And Tangle actually going to come out 
and hit the darks here, but it's TCM who are fighting. They're the ones chasing, and the Entangle is just going to be looked to use defensively by them sometime. They've also lost a Shadow Demon now, and Nyx Assassin is on the run. Carapace on cooldown for eight more seconds, and oh, Jungle, he's actually got his Omni Slash up. He's going to chew his way through a Gyrocopter. Important kill coming out on him, and Quicks needs to be careful. He's got no mana for a Rage. He's going to get taken out. That's the Aegis now. Two for two trade. They've also managed to fi finish this Aegis, and We'll see an immediate rage, I imagine, here. Can't TP because of this entangle, and he may actually be in a bit of trouble here, if he's not careful. He's going to use the open wounds on the bed, look to try to use that to buy himself some time to run away, but the Impale comes in with a Juggernaut spin, Nyx Assassin gets the kill on Lifestealer, and TCM have overextended it. It's 9 for 9, but I believe that... Uh, I know that fade heavily. That trait heavily favours Oryx. Oryx going to be really happy with that engagement. They're up against an Aegis Lifesteal. They kill him twice, and they also get a kill on the Gyrocopter. Juggernaut did his smart TP out there, and he's now almost got his battle free, so he's going to have some decent DPS coming into play very, very shortly. The, entangle, the Entangling Bear. He's got the extra attack speed from the Maelstrom. He's gone for a more attack speed heavy build, rather than looking to get the Radiance up, and it paid off there with a couple key Entangles in that fight. As uh, someone's asking, this is a best of one, I believe, in the We Play Dota 2 League Qualifier. TCM right now, they're looking to, to get their place here. I mean, they're sort of one of the favorites. As, as far as you look at the team list here, it's TCM and NextKZ are the two big names in this qualifier. And uh, it's Oryx, though, with the uh, Dubas. As well as, I mean, I'd say, I don't know who... Uh, I, it's Tony Montana I've seen in some competitive games, as well as Dubas. But the other three names, completely unknown to me. Do a quick profile check, but uh, for the most part, these guys, uh, I don't know if they have aliases or what, but they are looking solid here. Ukrainian team. There is no dishonor. Sima. CA. It looks like an all Ukrainian team for the most part. And uh, well, they're looking good here. I see Sima with a completed Battle Fury dealing with an ancient stack, so he's going to get himself an even more farm. I think Lone Drill was, was eyeballing that one earlier on before he backed off, but Juggernaut will happily take it, and he's actually going to have it respawn in just a second, probably look to kill it again. So he deals with the Ancients, because, well, we've got Nyx Assassin at mid, Lone Drill in the neutral, so they're really just uh, using this farm relatively efficiently, or at least as efficiently as possible, and we'll see Lone Drill looking to use to get his Assault Crest up. The Plate Mail now up on the bear, so gets it before the Hyperstone, which is I, I would not the decision I would make, but uh, you can see why when you're up against the this right click damage coming out from a Nakes, or the life I should say. It was a gyrocopter, so a lot of damage there, and I think that's something which he's decided, okay, I need to keep my bear alive in these fights to get off as many entangles as possible, even though it won't have the same attack speed. He goes for the armor. There's still a lot of magic damage when you look at the Iron Shell, the Leshrac stun, you've got a Gale coming into play, you've got a Rocket Barrage. We're going to have to find out whether Oryx can defend this T1 tower. Rage being popped just to ensure it does go down. Dubas actually in the front line is taking a lot of damage. He's going to get open wounds, and now we're going to have Lifesteal going in. Immediately stunned up. Doesn't actually have the Rage up. This is kind of bad for Quicks when he hasn't got this Rage in this fight. Darks here. Is this Wall of Rep going to do nothing? He managed to get an invest, invest into an illusion. Not the ideal case scenario for him, but he is going to keep him alive just long enough to help deal with this Lone Jordan. He's still fighting. He's got the armlet toggling happening as well as this awkwardly paced Iron... Sorry, Iron Shell Wall. What am I talking about? The, the Wall of Replica. As far as Wall of Replicas goes, that was one of the most awkward I've ever seen, but it was very effective. Completely crooked, but it worked out wonderfully somehow in the end. And uh, TCM, they come out on top of that fight. Even without the Aegis this time, they just managed to get the better positioning, the good Darkseer ultimate off, and... This Blink Dagger up on Darkseer was largely the reason, I imagine. I didn't quite see where he initiated in from, but I think... Well, it looks like it was just sort of a bad bad choice of fights from Oryx. They'd already lost their Tier 2 tower, but they really wanted to fight it, especially Dubas. He was on the front lines. He was when he got jumped on, and he just does not have the survivability to really be there. Darkseer followed up, and the problem is, when Enchantress got jumped and they went on Enchantress, all three or four Oryx here is grouped up to try go in and protect Enchantress, and that just led Darkseer into getting a perfect vacuum wall of rep off. And Tony Montana, he's gone Necromonican. I like this little pickup. Get some additional mana burn. I mean, Lifestealer without mana cannot get off a rage, so it's I mean, it's on a direct counter to, to Lifestealer, but it's definitely a, a decent one. It also gives you some additional map control when you can use that blue Necromon once you get level 3 to help de ward. They did kill the gem in that last fight, but main target for this this, this Necrobook looks to be the, the Lifestealer. Gyrocopter to a lesser extent. 
He's actually got 1k mana pool, so bringing down that mana pool not really going to be feasible. It looks like he's got a few points in stats as well as this drums, the manta style, all these things giving him this plus intel, so he's not that prone to being mana bone. It's all the life stealer. Venomancer maybe. If you send on Venomancer, you can maybe cut down his mana so that he can't use his ultimate, but he has got arcane boots, we'll have a magic stick. The main target, as I said, life stealer. Get that get that mana down. Even if he can still get mana up for a rage, maybe it means he doesn't have an open wound and just one less disable is gonna be a big thing. Whereas you can't use that mana burn and take out a spell. Like you go on less track, he's always gonna have mana for a split earth. Same for Dark with a vacuum ultimate. Maybe the vacuum ultimate is slightly harder to uh, sustain your mana for as it does cost him three, a good 500 mana out of this 900, so... Could see maybe being thrown on the dark team, but... They just want ways of killing off Lifestealer, and uh, we'll see whether or not they've, they're going to have the damage to do that. They've got Lone Druid. Looks like Chaymel has picked up. No Hyperstone as of yet. He's got 800 gold, so he's still a bit of a ways from that Assault Caress. They have got... I mean, Shadow Demon is sort of like the ultimate support hero, as far as what you can get out of it. Disruption, fantastic skill. Obviously, defensively, offensively as a set, but late game it can really scale well, using it to save whoever gets initiated on, and then purge the spell that goes through BKB, or in the Life Stealer's case, it goes through Rage. Oh, Enchantress, good out. Going for a stroll in, in your own jungle, and uh, TCM were there waiting. They get themselves up another kill now, up 13 kills to 10. This Go Audio is leading the charts, looking for more blood. Possibly Juggernaut blood as uh, he scurries away. Tony Montana now on the front line. Does have that Necrobook 1-up. 1,200 gold as well to his name, so very close to that. Sorry, 1,200 gold, what am I talking about? I completely missed. I'm not sure where I got 1,200 from. 800 gold. As uh, he's going to be looking for that Necrobook 2. 1,200 gold is what you need. 1,250 for the Necrobook level 2. Uncontested tower now, so TCM have taken down all these other towers. They circle the enemy nudes. It looks like they just want to kill these. I think this is like, hey, let's starve our opponents. We can farm their neutrals, deny them of a lot of farm, a lot of XP. Nyx Assassin, blink, yep. <laughs> Saw that blink coming. I think Dax is like, eh, they'll come, look, they'll come looking for me, and I'll just immediately blink away. Luckily, Nyx didn't go vendetta ring in. Don't think they have any gem at the time being. I think gem's still on cooldown. But we see Venomance are looking for another one, especially now he's got the safety from this Ghost Scepter. You don't have to worry about those entangles as much as well as the Juggernaut. Oh, juggernaut Omni Slash can't be used to go straight for him. That was something we saw in that last fight at mid when he did have that gem where he just got completely focused down first. They knew how crucial that was. Nick Assassin killed him and then immediately destroyed the gem. He didn't even try to pick it up. Didn't want to risk any of those TCM heroes, any of Venomance's allies, taking the gem and lasting out the fight. He wanted to make sure it did go down. And that gem... Probably on cooldown for a bit longer. No, okay. Off cooldown, it looks like. Ooh. Dire Sentry Wards. There's a lot of picking going out there. I want to say... I'm pretty sure they saw this. Observer Wards are there. And Sentry Wards. They sing on Sentry Wards. So this is being spotted. Especially now with a pause. <laughs> I say that because the issue is now... Maybe they w didn't spot it, but you pause and then suddenly it's like... Okay. Well... We can see four heroes. If they all they have to do is look around. If they thing is they are gonna look around because they've got this observer here. They'll they'll click mid and say, hey, we can see these creeps in mid. Let's just see what's going on there. Like let's see what's amused. And I'll be like, oh, there's invis heroes. So question is, is this actually lag or is this TCM looking to strategize a, a counter gank for this smoke? Nah, it looks like it is. It is legit lag. Some team speak stuff. They're gonna switch on over. And uh should be should be good to go now. We'll see how TCM look to deal with this. I'm 90% sure they've spotted this smoke. I'll we'll see whether they look they whether or not they look to group up and try fight them head on. Venomancer. He's gonna drop some plague wards here. Oh, that's actually gonna scout out the spirit bear. Venomancer immediately retreats, knowing something's up. He can only I mean if he wants to go forward, this juggernaut's not gonna kill him. The Omni Slash I mean Omni Slash obviously would kill him, but not with a ghost scepter. You just have to pop it quickly. Darkseid is still up on him. He's got this blink mech and now 2.7k gold. So, if you want to see another big item coming soon, maybe a Shiver's Guard. Maybe even a Sheep Stick to help deal with some of these carries. Enchantress, I think, misclicks the heal there. I don't think it was any need for that. Although, maybe going to look to heal up this Spirit Bear. Juggernaut steep it out. So, now TCM are going to look to sort of go charging in. Actually, really charging in. They're chasing. Phase Boots, Manta style. Actually, going to find a stun on, on uh, Hala here. 
Gyrocopter does get in range for that. Disruption not going to be used on himself, and that means this, uh, this stun guaranteed hit. Tony Montana now being caught up. Is there another gem yet? Is there any sentry wards? Looks like nothing of the sort. Tony Montana blinking out, not even worried about staying in vendetta form. He was he was scared. He was thinking, okay, sentry's dust. They've got to have something. We've got to play this careful one. And they're going to go back into Roshan TCM, and they've got a sentry ward eyeing things off from the high ground as both their support heroes have Ghost Scepters. So this is looking really good for TCM, this position they're in right now. As they're going to get themselves in ages. Hyper sewn up on life still, so he's building towards that assault career. So, let's see whether or not Lone Druid can finish off his assault career shortly, because right now it's not up. And it's still about 1k gold away. Needs the recipe as well as the hyper stone. And comparing this farm to the life stealer, it's a bit of a mismatch. Not only is life stealer farm, you've got even, even more farm on the gyrocopter. Phase Manta Helm of the Dominator with 3k gold now. His CS, it's pretty damn high. Juggernaut actually leading the charts, but uh, he's he's still behind the gyrocopter as far as complete net worth goes, and he's looking to build towards a Manta star with this Yasha of his. Or possibly, maybe not, maybe not, I say that, but a lot of Jugs just love this Yasha because of how cost-effective it is as an item. There's a lone druid. Oh, he's trying to trying to get out of there. Thought he could buy himself enough time. Darkseid went blinking in just to get the vision they needed. They're going to burst him down, and I think this is their chance where they go looking for a push here. Well, they haven't got life still. Life still are immediately abandoned top lane. He's looking to group up. They're pinging towards mid lane. Either they look to group up at mid lane or they all swing bottom. Life still are just not there. He finds himself an illusion rune. Not actually going to pick it up. It looks like he's just watching bottom lane. He's not, not watching his hero, which is probably a better decision. So he knows what he's going to be running into. See his position here. Juggernaut Omnisai should be watching his big fire as it breaks out. The wall of replica. Not as well placed as you'd like. And right now it's Team Aurochs who's taken out. Two, make it three. Lifestealer, he's got the Aegis, now he's now on the run. He does not want to go in there, and Venomance is going to be a sacrificial lamb here. This is the problem with Lifestealer being top. They were not ready to fight this. Gem actually gets dropped and picked up by... Do they pick it up? Do they just kill it? I'm not sure about the decision to kill it if they did. I know it looked like Venomance was trying to destroy it himself, but... Wow! Really, really poor fight for TCM, and they were just in too deep of the enemy territory when they didn't have Life Sealer. They were looking to group up with him, but Life Sealer just was not there in time. I don't, I don't mean to say that to blame Life Sealer. If anything, it was his team who just need to relax and just wait it out, wait for uh, the Life Sealer to arrive, or at least back off and look to regroup with him. Bit of a mistake there, and Orox they they pounce on it. They're now going to look to take out this tier two bottom tower with it, and possibly even keep on pushing. Especially considering, I imagine they've got enough gold for this assault crest for this uh, for the lone druid. Is there a hyperstone? No, no hyperstone. Hmm, lone druid doesn't. I wonder if he actually bought back in that fight because he's uh, very low on gold. Yeah, lone druid actually bought back that fight. Something that went unnoticed by me, but he bought back that fight. So he's actually a lot further away from this assault crest. So it was a four hero kill. Uh, for TCM, but they killed off Lone Druid and they also forced out the buyback, and that's a hero who really needs this assault Chris, I feel. This Spirit Bear is hitting very slow for a Spirit Bear. You can watch it here at mid lane. If he's expecting to do some decent DPS with this, as well as get off some entangles, it's it's gonna be hard without this attack speed being there. How many blades am I holding up? Juggernaut though, he's a hero who's got plenty of farm to make up for. He does go for the full Manta style. But the push is coming up on lane. Chew with 4k gold. Deciding not to spend it for the time being. Probably going to look for a butterfly, I've got to say. You need the evasion for both Lone Druid's Bear as well as uh, the Juggernaut. And we're not going to be looking at an MKB anytime soon. Maybe Jug goes for his next big item. Is that old Tony Montana on the low ground here? Are there actually sentry wards to spot him out? It doesn't look... They're pushing without sentries. I'm not sure... Actually, sorry. I take that back. They've got one smack dab in the middle here. I believe it's in tower range. Yeah, tower we're going to deal with that. I've seen another one being dropped maybe shortly. Nyx Assassin. I uh, know he's he's no longer invis. He's got a Necrobook 3, so he's gonna be able to de ward all these sentries. And this is gonna make it really hard for TCM. They haven't got a gem available. They've just lost a gem. And these sentry wards are just gonna be taken out relatively easily once the Necrobook is on the field. Dragon will actually stunned up in the front line. It's gonna be defensively disrupted. Buy him some time to just get out of there. Otherwise he could find himself getting a, a vacuum as well as a gale on top of him and being put in a very, very icky situation. Point is just a jug illusion, in fact. This top T2 dog going to take a lot of damage. There's a double siege script there. Darks are going to go blinking in. He doesn't get off the ultimate. The carapace stops him. Dead in his feet. They instantly 
Drop Juggernaut though, Dark's reaction to buy back Juggernaut, it looked like he was too far out in front. Even though they take out the Darkseer before he ultimates, it's still not the ideal fight for Aurochs. They've got Life Steel on the front lines, he's taking a lot of damage, he has got the Aegis, he wants to just blow it away it looks like. He needs to be careful, he's only got about a minute left on it. If he's not if he's not careful, he could just lose his Aegis, lose his Aegis before actually dying and then die following the loss of it. He needs to just die. If I'm him, I'm just thinking die quickly. He's trying to armlet toggle, actually doing a fantastic job of armlet toggling. Too good almost. Just die already, Quicks. He's going to invest himself back up to a high HP, but the good news is they're getting Raxes here. They take out the Enchantress, and now they're going to get both bottom Raxes here. TCM, their hero composition just too damn strong and scary. And you've got Chewie now with 6.5k gold. That's Butterfly gold, if he wants it. And I imagine that's what we're going to be seeing him pick up now. Unless we go the route of, like, pure damage. Which I just don't see happening. What has he got? No, he's going Satanic. He's going, he's looking to make that, that, that Helm of the Dominate into a Satanic. I'm really surprised by this. We've expected, I mean, the Evasion gives him almost more survivability than the Satanic will offer, but he wants the raw HP, he wants the, uh, basically the Life Seal from when you get really low. Life Seal back up. He just doesn't have a ton of damage or attack, I mean, he's got decent attack speed as an agility hero with a, a Manta style and drums, but the damage isn't there. We'll have to see if he goes for the Butterfly now, because that's mostly attack speed. He still won't have damage, which is... Which is what he's lacking. So yeah, he's going to go damage. I think that's okay. Once you go the Satanic, it's either Satanic or Butterfly. If you get both, you get a lot of survivability, but not a lot of damage. This Demon Edge is what he needs for the damage aspect. It's gonna, we're going to be looking at either a crit or a MKB from that. Or we could see the like the YOLO rapiers. Man, I need, I need to stop hanging out with Blitz, because I, I start saying YOLO. It's, it's not a good habit. But I imagine without an Aegis up his sleeve, he's not going to be looking for the, the Divine Rapier. Quicks at top lane. Wow, still no divine. Sorry, divine. Now I'm sucking this divine rapier mentality. Still no assault crest on him. Looks like he does have enough gold for it. Just needs the recipe. So we'll see him getting that for the next push here. And TCM up a set of Raxes now. This next push is going to be even harder to stop when you've got an assault crest up. You've got the satanic on the gyrocopter with the demon edge. There's a lot of damage on these heroes. This Chewie does grab himself his TP. What are you doing with this? What's this courier doing? Lifesteal has probably been waiting for it for some time now. Really wants this assault Chris up. And he's actually going to head back to base, so they're not really in any rush to start this push. And anything, they'll probably wait for Roshan. If they really want to play this safe. They're on the dire side. They can just wait out the, the Roshan respawn. They're up a set of Raxes, so they're not really in any rush to push and end this. Lone Druid has an... We'll have an Assault Crest next push. Especially if they wait. It's almost guaranteed you'll have it, but I don't think that's going to be a major concern for them. It's not like, hey, we need to push now before he's got this Assault Crest. Although, they've got these new cheap cost-effective items. I said potential Shiva's Guard. Darkseer went for something even, even more cheaper and cost-effective. He's gone for the Vlad, so the plus 5 armor, the extra damage aura, the Life Seal as well for some of these melee heroes, especially Life Seal, are going to help out a lot in these pushes. The main thing is the armor and the damage at this point in the game. And plus 5 armor to your entire team is pretty significant. And so Chewie actually denies this top tower. Life Stealer infests into someone? Ooh, Dark's here. They're actually going to go into oh, Juggernaut in No Man's Land. He actually gets fogged by the Venomancer, it looks like, or possibly just Ghost Heaven. No, Ghost Heaven wasn't used. Gyrocopter going to drop the cooldown. Nyx Assassin is the first to fall, and now Enchantress trying to impede us down a few heroes. Ghost Heaven keeping Enchantress. Dubas will have a bit longer. Chewie in the front line. He's just going to fight his way out of this man mode from Chewie. Complete team wipe. TCM. Five for nothing. Don't even need an Aegis. Don't even need anything. The Satanic was there for Chewie. Aegis managed to life steal his way back up to full health. And now TCM going to march down this top lane. Look to take another set of Raxes. The creeps are dealing with bottom lane. Chipping away at this tier 2 tower. Or tier 2. Tier 4 tower. The tier 3. What's after a tier 3 tower? Tier 2 tower. No, it's a tier 4. Come on, gods. Come on, gods. Get in the game. But top lane. This is, well, potentially a game-breaking, a game-losing fight for Aurochs. They're actually going to have three buybacks right out. Gonna try and force TCM back, and the problem is TCM, well, they'll just back off, but they'll back off with a huge, huge lead. Not to mention Roshan respawning. It's gonna be hard for Oryx to contest that. Even with these heroes buying back, to walk their way across the map with his bottom lane continually pushing in. They're actually down the T4 tower down to about half HP. And speed. Bit of a drop there, not as big as you'd expect, down to 7.5k, but it's only maybe a 1k swing that team fight. Big XP drop though, that's the main thing. When you win, getting kills gets you XP more than it does gold. Oh, there's a gold drop. What am I talking about? It's a 4k, 4k gold drop off one team fight. And 
Uh, now they camp around Roshan. They know it's up in a minute or so. Sentry Ward's being dropped. Plague Ward's sitting up, being set up around it, and it's just a matter of time. Whether or not they, it doesn't look like they wrote it down because they're not entirely sure of this. They're really camping inside the pit. D Rune is there. They'll probably want to pick that up to help them take out Roshan nice and fast. Sentries as well as Observe Ward. So even if they try smoke on fast, as long as they've got the camera over that, they can see what's coming in. Gale, just being used. <laughs> Warning shots, it looks like, for Juggernaut. He's actually going to have a vacuum pulling him in. And there we go, Roshan respawns. DD Rune, not actually being picked up. It looks like they just want to deal with Roshan first. Gyrocopter, Rapier. He's getting the Aegis. It is the YOLO Rapiers, although... Apparently it's, it's, a, it's, it's a Yolt Rapier. He does have two lives now. He's not going full YOLO. He's got the Rapier, he's got Nages now, and well, defending gets very, very difficult at this point. Supports will just go splat, and well, I, I mean, even these carries. We've got a Satanic as well with the Divine Rapier. It gets very, very difficult and painful. We'll have to see how they look to defend this. They're going to have to look for some well-positioned heroes. Get Nyx's assassin hitting multiple heroes in his impale. Juggernaut needs to isolate some heroes with his ulti. And uh, to me, they need to try to pick off the Darkseid before he gets off his vacuum wall. Last time they did, bottom line, they did a fantastic job, even when they lost Raxes. He vacuumed, and Nyx's assassin carapaced the vacuum so that he, he was stunned. He couldn't get off the vacuum into a Darkseid, into his wall combo. But I don't think that Darks is going to gift that one away again. If anything, he may able to do the wall before the vacuum. And there's uh, TCM, they swing top. Gyrocopter and Lifestealer coming down this top lane. Cheese is over on the Lifestealer. He's got himself only 14 or gold, so no buyback there. How many buybacks on this Radiant team? I imagine very few. All the buybacks are on the Dire. Three buybacks that last fight and just not much gold at all. Jagger just gets himself some evasion. He's like, anything to help keep me alive. Lone Druid's the only one with gold for buyback, but he doesn't have the cooldown. And wow, still no Assault Caress. This bear just has no attack speed. He needs an Assault Caress and it's just not there. It's not in play. Black Cannon just melting these heroes. Tony Montana gets down to half HP. He just hits the tower with some Flat Cannons and just people melt. So damn fast. All they need is some vision and that's what they're getting from these Plague Wards. Chewie just goes as far forward as he can. That's uh, Axe Each. He does take a lot of damage with the Carapace. It's like right clicking himself here as Tony Montana gets pulled back into the Darkseid wall. Darkseid gets the initiation you need. Not the best wall on vacuum but it's good enough. Mech getting popped from, from Werne, the Darkseid. They're going to bring down the Spirit Bear. And Lone Druid not going to have any damage left to pack. Ladies Top Raxes go down and now Aura's going to find themselves in all sorts of danger and trouble. GG is called. It looks like TCM. They weathered the storm. They're up against a tough opponent, a capable opponent here in the We Play Dota 2 League Qualifier. As uh, TCM take them down. Follow at go, go underscore audio if you want to follow the TCM player, of course. <laughs> Some shameless promoting coming out from TCM, but they've, they've earned the right to do so. They take down Horrox, and uh, they now advance to the next round here in the We Play Dota 2 League, getting one step closer to qualifying for the tournament where we've got $10,000 in cash as well as $10,000 in gear, so $20,000 in prizes up for grabs with the best teams in Europe and America. A lot of those invites already revealed with Na'Vi, Dignitas, Liquid, EG, Empire, VP, Fnatic, all these teams invited to play in this tournament. As uh, hopefully you guys, hopefully you guys are enjoying it, and I'm uh, not sure if we'll have any more games today. It's a two-day qualify. I'm not sure if there'll be more rounds today or whether we have to wait till tomorrow. But thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, I'll be updating you guys shortly. I'll have a quick ad break now with whether or not we're going to have more games. You can follow me at Twitter on at BTS Gods. While we're doing our shameless Twitter promotions of TCM, we can also do mine. I'm at BTS Gods. Follow me on Twitter, and you can follow Beyond the Summit, of course. The Twitch channel is the best thing to follow, because then you know whenever we go live. You get an email saying, hey, Beyond the Summit's live with this awesome content. Check it out. But anyways, guys, thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll be back soon.